Welcome to Locked On's 2023 NFL Mock Draft Special, the most comprehensive mock draft with local and national experts providing insight and analysis you can't get anywhere else. Don't miss a single pick as we discuss where the future stars of the NFL will call home. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And away we go with episode five of six of the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, the most comprehensive mock draft you are going to find and even bigger this year. Six episodes in total going through round one and beyond the first selection of every team, even those that don't have a first round draft pick. Unparalleled insight from the war rooms of all 32 teams, thanks to the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And of course, a reminder, don't worry for those teams that don't have first round picks. We will hear from you. And some of those teams might be moving into round one too. So stay tuned. You never know when your team is going to select because trades are happening and talks are happening. And currently talks are happening right now uh, from uh, multiple of our 32 teams. So not only are we hearing from NFL hosts, we're hearing from our college hosts, uh, NFL draft experts in the NFL, uh, locked on NFL draft war room. And of course, the draft dudes, Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino of locked on NFL scouting are here. And so are all of our uh, NFL hosts getting ready to go and uh, together chatting in the, the locked on war room, having a lot of fun there and, and working out trades and reacting to picks and what their competitors are doing in this mock draft. And of course, we are your hosts. I am Brian Peacock, NFL analyst and co-host of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, Locked On 49ers podcast as well. And here are my co-hosts, former NFL scout Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL on Twitter and Keith Sanchez at the Talent Code on Twitter, team scout for LSU Tigers championship team and half of the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. Guys, I'm pumped to get going here on episode five. So guys, I know the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock here at pick 23, but Luke Braun, the host of Locked On Vikings, uh, he I don't know if he's keen on staying in this spot. So I want to check into the Locked On War Room where there's a lot of interesting conversations happening and uh, I, th I think actually now, hold on, before we go to the Locked On War Room, we, it is official. The Minnesota Vikings are not going to select to start this episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Special. It is going to be for the third time in the first round. The Seattle Seahawks are on the clock and Whoa. have swung a deal to go to pick 23. The Minnesota Vikings are going to get the Seattle pick at the top of the second round, pick 37, and their other second round pick, number 52 overall, to get up to number 23. So no longer the Vikings. It is actually the Seattle Seahawks that are here and uh, before we talk about what this means for the Seahawks, I want to go to Luke Braun in the Locked On War Room here to get his thoughts on the Vikings moving out of the first round. Uh, once Anthony Richardson went at four, I, I had some negotiations in place to trade up, but only if it was Richardson. I wasn't going to do it for Levis. I had a little blip in my – I wavered a bit with Christopher when he was up at 17 – to go up for Levis because then it suddenly got really close. But then I remembered, wait, I don't actually want him that bad. So I didn't make any deals with anybody else. <laughs> and then it was just a matter of pitting uh, guys against each other for the best deal. And two second round picks from Seattle was one that nobody else could beat. So. All right. So two second round picks from Seattle. If you're the Vikings, you're willing to trade up for Anthony Richardson, but you're not even willing to sit at 23 and draft Will Levis. So that's a big question for me here guys and then the other one is is that will levis is that the pick that the seattle seahawks are moving up for matt we'll start with you in your opinion what's going on here with the seahawks and the vikings i would imagine this is for a quarterback probably levis i threw out hooker's name as well but i did mention too that when seattle was on the clock last i thought a pass catcher was the move to make you know a tight end a zay flowers type but i would imagine if you're going to move this far up it's for a quarterback is there that big of a difference, Matt? You're going to go, you're going to, uh, Keith, I'm sorry, you're going to go up for one quarterback and you're not even willing to draft the other quarterback that falls to you at 23 because you're at least thinking about quarterback here in that case if you are the Vikings. 
Yeah, and, and the thing is this, that you can see if it were other teams, right, that the, the situation could be the opposite for Anthony Richardson and Will Levis, right? There may have been some teams at the back end of the draft that, you know, wanted to move up or would have been more aggressive, you know, had things played out differently for all of these quarterbacks, right? So Will Levis falling, um, you know, I kind of I fully understand the fall because, like I said, I feel like Will Levis has a lot of things that need to be improved, but the upside is there. I look at more so the, um, and Luke talked about it, right, trying to drive a hard bargain for these picks. Um, I wonder if knowing that we talked about how it could fit with Minnesota Vikings, right? Did, did they try to squeeze Seattle even more knowing that this could have been a good fit for them possibly? Well, let's find out. Is it Will Levis? Is it somebody else? The Seattle Seahawks shocked us once already. Let's go back to Corbin Smith of Locked On Seahawks with the pick at 23. With the 23rd selection of the Locked On NFL mock draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Will Levis, quarterback, Kentucky. Geno Smith re-signed on a three-year contract in March. He's expected to be the starting quarterback moving forward. And at the same time, the Seahawks have been very interested in all four of the top quarterback prospects in this class. In the event that Levis ends up falling into the 20s, I don't think that the team could resist the opportunity to trade back into the first round and select him as the quarterback in waiting to groom behind Smith when you consider the physical traits he's got a cannon arm he can make all the NFL throws and he's extremely athletic this is a player that can run the football well he can hurdle over defenders not sure if NFL teams are going to want him to do that but he's got the athleticism and all of the physical traits to be a franchise quarterback he's going to have to clean up his decision making process and limit his interceptions at the next level that's going to be the job of the Seahawks coaching staff in this mock draft to be able to get those areas cleaned up and if they can, he's got a chance to be a very good franchise quarterback down the line once he replaces Geno Smith. So the Seattle Seahawks go D-line twice and now quarterback, a high upside player that can sit behind, uh, you know, a veteran quarterback now in Seattle. And looking at Geno Smith's contract, it's a, it's a contract that makes sense to add a rookie quarterback to. So uh, I think quarterback is in the cards potentially for the Seattle Seahawks here. And, and we'll see if that ends up being the selection. And uh, do you approve here, Keith, even though maybe Will Levis isn't, isn't the highest on your board at quarterback? Yeah, I would say this is the third player that the Seattle Seahawks took, right, that it's simply going to work or it's not, right? Like we're talking about guys that have high ceilings, but they have equally low floors. So for the Seattle Seahawks, it was a very interesting draft, you know, draft they had thus far in the first round. They were aggressive. They were active. They did a lot. But I think all of these prospects, is it's really simple. It's either going to work and it's going to work really well, or there are going to be a lot of question marks. And we're going to look at this draft five years from now and be like, man, those things just simply didn't work out. It's time to hear from our college hosts. This is Locked On Kentucky host Lance Daw on a guy who had an up-and-down career at Kentucky in Will Levis. Will Levis, quarterback, Kentucky. One of the most physically gifted signal callers in this year's draft class just may be the next coming of Josh Allen. Hi, my name is Lance Daw, host of the Locked On Kentucky podcast. Levis transferred into Kentucky after a couple of years spent at Penn State And underneath new Wildcats offensive coordinator Liam Cohen, in his first year, Levis blossomed. He threw for 24 touchdowns and became more of a threat on the ground than anyone had ever expected. And heading into his second year, Levis was expected to build on his draft stock. Unfortunately, Liam Cohen left for the Rams, and offensive line issues hindered Levis' ability to fully develop. Draft analysts have criticized Levis for being too inconsistent, inaccurate, and turnover prone, but based on his physical gifts alone, Levis is easily still one of the best QBs in this year's draft. Is he the next coming of Josh Allen? We'll have to wait and see. Josh Allen's a lofty comparison for Will Levis, certainly talented, and Josh Allen had to do a lot of work at the NFL level to get there. We'll see if Will Le- Levis is able to get there like Josh Allen did. Uh, Damian Parson, what do you think? Josh Allen, how good can Will Levis be? And do you like the fit for the Seattle Seahawks? The Seattle Seahawks have been busy in the first round. They're back again, trading up with the Minnesota Vikings and getting Will Levis, quarterback out of uh, out of Kentucky. Big, <laughs> body, beautiful guy. He's athletic and elite. Oh, I'm telling you, he's an elite arm talent. And I think pairing him with Pete Carroll, he gets to sit at least a year, maybe two, 
behind Geno Smith, who is the, the bona fide starter right now. And you think about giving Will Levis and that arm talent, a uh, Tyler Lockett, uh, Kenneth Walker, the third in the backfield, that good offensive line, but also DK Metcalf on the outside, be able to push the ball down the field. This young man has operated two NFL offenses. You think about the play action and the bootlegs reading kind of horizontal east and west, right? He does that. He does a good job of that. And then improving the footwork and giving them time to improve his game. This is a home run, in my opinion, for the Seattle Seahawks. Will Levis now, the fourth quarterback of this mock draft, is off the board to pick 23 to the Seattle Seahawks and move up to get him. The Green Bay Packers had moved back from pick 15 and are now on the clock at pick 24. So Peter Bukowski standing by with the Packers at 24. And remember, they added a defensive edge rusher in Josh Allen as part of that trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars to get them here to pick 24. So I ask you guys, Matt, uh, what are we looking at for the Packers after moving down at 24? I don't think things change dramatically for them, except there's a couple options that aren't available to them in that Jordan Addison and Dalton Kincaid went in the meantime. But I would have your choice of tight ends. My personal favorite is Musgrave, but I would understand Mayer or Washington. And Zay Flowers would be attractive. And, you know, stick it there in Rodgers and get a pass catcher in the first round when he walks out the door. Matt, great minds think alike, man. Because I like <laughs> Luke Musgrave also. Man. I think that's a really good pick here. And I'll also throw in another name, Boston College's Zay Flowers. And the reason is this, yeah. that you have Christian Watson, who's 6'4", 200-plus pounds. You have Romeo Dobbs, who's 6'4", 200 pounds. Now you add a slot wide receiver, which I believe it will be a really good complementary piece to those bigger wide receivers. Right now you're more versatile in the things you can do. So the Packers, if they go offense, man, you still have Aaron Jones, right? You have you have Dylan, so you can give Jordan Love everything he needs to be successful. This is a year where you're able to figure it out if he's your quarterback or not. I would add, looking at the draft board and some of the best players available, Darnell Wright. You don't know what the future yeah. of David Bakhtiari is going to be there, so keep building that offensive line. Help your young quarterback if they are turning the page, and it looks like they are to Jordan Love. Uh, and th they can use some edge help as well. Nolan Smith, some speed off the edge still available in this draft late in round one. Peter Bukowski ready with the selection for Locked On Packers at pick 24 in the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. With the 24th overall selection in the 2023 Locked On Mock Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Michael Mayer, tight end from Notre Dame. But that's not all. I'm Peter Bukowski, host of Locked On Packers. And yes, the Packers were supposed to pick at 15. They got calls, multiple calls in this case from teams hoping to unload pass rushers. The Packers jumped at the opportunity to move down to grab Michael Mayer, a tight end who is a perfect fit in this Matt LaFleur offense, someone who can play that true Y, be an inline blocker, but also be split out probably half the time if you need him to be the most complete tight end prospect in this class. I didn't want to take him at 15. I feel great about taking him at 24 and adding... Josh Allen, the pass rusher from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now it's 15 and 45 for Josh Allen. The trade down plus the extra pick is about a second round pick, that 45th pick, plus um, a high third round pick if we're going by the Rich Hill trade chart. So it's a lot to give up for Josh Allen. He's a really good player. And I don't think Preston Smith is going to last forever in Green Bay. Now you push Josh Allen with Rashawn Gary, both of whom need to get contracts understanding that, but you are not going to have guys like David Bakhtiari under contract for much longer. So the Packers can absorb that money, plus have a really nice player in 2023 while Rashawn Gary is trying to get back. I expect the Packers to get picks in an Aaron Rodgers trade. So I felt like I had an extra second round pick to play with to add an impact pass rusher and an impact pass catcher. Uh, I think it's funny that uh, that the Peter thinks he's getting one of those second round picks from the from the Jets and the Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I think this might keep playing out into a, into next year's draft. But really interesting there. So you have at least a short term, maybe not long term, edge in in Josh Allen, and you get yourself a tight end. And they went with the Y tight end in Michael Mayer here. Uh, how do you like it for the Green Bay Packers, man? It's fine. I like Musgrave better, but I mean, again, we're splitting hairs. I, I look at this tight end class and 
think there's four players that really stand out and they're all a little bit different shapes and sizes. Just depends what type you prefer. I'm certain Mayer will be a good player in the league and very useful for Jordan Love. Keith, is uh, is Josh Josh Allen's a really interesting player because he's athletic as all get out coming out of the draft in, in 2019. Some people thought he should even go ahead of Nick Bosa in that draft class. He's been a good, not great player for the Jaguars. Um, as far as the trade for the Jaguars getting rid of him and then the Packers adding a player like that along with, with Michael Mayer, how do you grade these things out? Yeah, I think that's what swings the pendulum for the, the Green Bay Packers was that they was able to add another pass rusher while Rashawn Gary is returning back from an injury. So when I look at the Packers and, you know, basically in the first round with, with um, Josh Allen and then Michael Mayer, I think it's solid, man. Like you said, you added another piece for Jordan Love. You get, you know, you get a security blanket. You get a guy that's really good in contested catch situations. So Michael Mayer, I approve. I think it was a good selection. And real quick, like Peter mentioned, who knows what happens or not, but after a trade down in round one and potentially, you know, possibly trading Aaron Rodgers, you may end up with, what, four or five day two picks or you yeah. know, 24 to 60. And there's a lot of spots on this roster that could use some help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Packers would definitely not be done at this point in the NFL draft. And. For some more analysis on the college side of things, Locked On Fighting Irish host Tyler Wojciak with more on Michael Mayer. What's going on, everybody? This is Tyler Wojciak from the Locked On Irish podcast here to talk about Michael Mayer, the elite tight end prospect out of Notre Dame. And pretty much from the moment Mayer stepped on campus at Notre Dame, he was the guy at his position, which is pretty incredible considering Notre Dame has as good of a claim as any to be considered the true tight end you in college football. As a true freshman, Mayer started over two upperclassmen, including junior Tommy Tremble, who would go on to be drafted in the third round of the ensuing NFL draft, as well as senior Brock Wright, who started for the Detroit Lions this past season. Mayer was as reliable as they come and was one of the most dominant players on the field throughout his entire career. He only missed one game in three seasons due to injury and hauled in 180 catches for nearly 2,100 yards in 18 touchdowns for his career. Those numbers were enough to put him in the record books forever as Mayer owns all of Notre Dame's major tight end career records, including touchdowns, receptions, and receiving yards, making him the greatest tight end ever at tight end U. As for Mayer's NFL projection, I think he's a surefire first round pick and I'm confident he has the highest floor of any player in this year's class. Whoever drafts him is getting a plug-and-play starter who, at worst, will be a multi-year starter and extremely productive player at the next level. He's a legit blocker. He has excellent ball skills, and he can play from any spot on the field. His testing numbers at the combine might not blow you away, but don't get it twisted. This guy is an elite football player and has the talent and the intangibles necessary to be a great player in the NFL. Locked on NFL Draft co-host Damian Parson on the selection of Michael Mayer to the Packers. The Green Bay Packers select Michael Mayer tight end out of Notre Dame. And I, I like this move for the Packers offense. Jordan Love, who's supposed to be the quarterback post Aaron Rodgers trade whenever it really happens. Mike, he, he will need some more bodies on this offense. And having the two explosive receivers in Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson from last year, now getting a Michael Mayer who, with those guys keeping safeties back, kind of opens up the middle of the field. When you think about two high safety looks and middle of the field open, I think Michael Mayer can be a good option for for Jordan Love, a security blanket, a guy that's highly productive. The comp is Jason Witten. He's steady Eddie. He just gets it done, and I think that will pair well for this team in Green Bay and a new quarterback. Next on the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, we've got picks 25 and 26, which are the New York Giants and Dallas Cowboys, respectively. Bitter rivals in the NFC East, trying to keep pace with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2023. On the way with the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, picks 25 and 26. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for that delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever built. You got to try it. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise in taste, healthy and taste amazing is what you get with Built Bars. And they hit all the macros you are looking for in a bar that is covered in 100% real 
chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. It tastes delicious and it sets it off and you really feel like you are getting a snack. Most built bars have only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. Go to built.com to find all the flavors. There's new flavors coming all the time at built.com. And now you can find them on your store shelves as well. Your local Walmart or Sam's club at Walmart. Check out four bar boxes of cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puff in the pharmacy section. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box of hit flavors, brownie batter puff and churro puff. And you can thank us later. And of course, you can find all the great flavors at built.com. Welcome back to the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. And the New York Giants are on the clock. Pick 25 in this uh, in this mock draft. And Patricia, Patricia Traina is the host of Locked On Giants. She's going to make this selection. She's been really good. In fact, I think the last two mock draft specials we've done, she nailed the pick for the New York Giants. So what direction does she go here for those Giants? A lot of people are plugging in a pass catcher late in round one. Keith, do you see a pass catcher that is worthy of the selection at 25 to the Giants? Yeah. I mean, if I sound hesitant, it's because I'm hesitant, right? It's This is where we hit the, the part of the draft where these receivers, and you talk about the New York Giants needing like a true ex you know, that dominant number one guy. I'm not sure if there's a bunch of those guys left, right? So you may possibly want to trade down and then pick up a Cedric Tillman or a Jonathan Mingo or a Xavier Hutchison. Or, you know, they can go cornerback, just simply address the cornerback uh, positional need and then, then go from there. Matt, if you're in charge of the Giants, is there a player that sticks out to you at this point late in round one? Yeah, as mentioned, I really think – Anywhere in the secondary would be useful, and people might not realize this, but Wink Martindale's defense plays with more defensive backs on the field than any in the league. And I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that can't name you the six defensive backs of the Giants that play a lot of snaps. Uh, the other spot I would look, and I don't think there's a prototypical X receiver, unfortunately, is interior O-line. I mean, if you want to run the ball with Barkley and Jones as much like as they that. do, you know, I, Osiris Torrance might make a lot of sense, too. And Darnell, right? You could move him inside yeah, as well. Still some, uh, some yeah. big bodies out there that we've seen fall a little bit in this mock draft. Let's find out who the pick is at 25 from Patricia Trena, the host of Locked on Giants. If the New York Giants want to continue closing the gap with the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles, they're going to have to start with ensuring that they have the firepower necessary to cover the speedsters in the NFC East. And so with the 25th overall pick in the Lock On NFL Network's mock draft, the New York Giants select Maryland cornerback Deontay Banks, six foot and 200 pounds. Banks is a big physical corner who's a smooth mover with loose hips and more than acceptable speed after clocking in with a 4.35 in the 40. A solid tackler who seems to enjoy playing press coverage with a little more polish to help him improve his discipline and instincts Banks could become a solid contributor for the back end of the Giants defense for seasons to come. Six feet, four, three speed and loose hips. Keith, that sounds like a pretty good combination at the end of round one. That sounds like a really good combination. Sounds like you're getting a guy that's a star, man. I really like Deontay Banks as a football player. I think he's a plug and play man, a man guy. Um, he he, like you say, he has really good size, right? So he can play press man. He can get into those wide receivers, and you potentially have—I don't want to say a lockdown guy, but you have a a match guy that can match other wide receivers, number one, number one wide receivers, especially in this NFC East, right? We talk about Terry McLaurin, we're talking about C.D. Lamb, and those type of guys. Yeah, now we can name at least one of the, the members of the New York Giants <laughs> secondary here, Deontay Banks. Next, Brandon Olson, college football expert to break down the college career of Deontay Banks out of Maryland. The modern NFL cornerback is tall, long, athletic, and scheme versatile. And the, weirdly enough, those are also words that you'd use to describe Maryland's Deontay Banks, who's capable of becoming a legitimate cornerback one in the NFL. You get the feeling he's one of those guys who's going to be a better pro player than he was a prospect. And he was still a pretty good prospect at that. Six foot tall, four three five forty, capable of playing man zone press off coverage. He's capable of doing it all, and he's probably going to for a long time on Sunday. So make an NFL team very happy. Let's hear again from Locked On NFL Draft co-host 
Damian Parson, who's got information and knowledge and maybe a little scouting report on how Deontay Banks might fit in with the New York Giants. Wink Martindale gets his outside corner. Deontay Banks out of Maryland, elite type of athlete, explosive young man, but he's physical. I love his reps in man coverage. This is a young man that knows how to reset the line of scrimmage and reset the tempo and timing of routes. He will disrupt them and get into the face of receivers and battle it out, get into a fist fight of sorts and be able to throw off their timing and stay in phase. He can play some zone, but I think this is a man-to-man corner through and through. Good movement skills, good footwork, good transitions. And like I said, the athleticism, you really, really love to buy into. So Wink Martindale needs a corner. He needs a potential CB1 for his defense. You know he wants to send some blitz packages, so you need somebody that can live on the island. I think Deontay Banks has everything. I'm Joe Marino. He's Kyle Krabs. We're from the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes. And finally... Kentucky quarterback Will Levis comes off the board. The Seattle Seahawks make a move to get back into the mix here and get their answer at quarterback, or at least the the guy that they're going to have as their projected answer at quarterback. And one of the things that I talked about with Seattle in their navigating this quarterback situation with what Geno Smith displayed last year and kind of moving forward was, hey, we really like that, but we don't want to be overcommitted to it. And I think this is a great, example of how they did that masterfully where they brought back Geno Smith and they paid him a, a good amount of money, but the contract doesn't overcommit to him. And it, it really opens up this opportunity to draft a quarterback. And now they've made multiple selections here in the first round and they get a guy here in Will Levis that has all the tools, right? He's built like an action figure, can make every throw, really dynamic athlete, uh, has experience running an NFL system. Now, obviously, the 2022 tape was a little bit uneven, but I think some of the architectural issues in Kentucky, whether it was personnel or coaching, uh, really impacted his ability to go out there and play his best football. He goes to Seattle, a a place that uh, I think can give him the opportunity to onboard and not have to play right away. Obviously, Geno Smith's still their guy. Uh, but they can usher in the Will Levis era and give him a real opportunity to be ready to go and maximize on his physical upside. So, Joe, you you took all the points off the bingo card here from the Will Levis and and Seattle angle. So let's talk about the other side of this coin. How about Minnesota trading down and getting 37 and 52? Joe, Minnesota was a team that won a lot of closely contested ballgames last year, but their strategy for this offseason seems to indicate that they they feel as though they're in a little bit of a transitionary period. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, But one of the biggest areas of need on this roster is in the secondary, and we've only had three corners go in what is an excellent corner class. And you move back from 23 to to 37, and you get 52. I really like the trade-down component for the Minnesota Vikings – to kick the can down the road a little bit, let the board declare itself a little bit more. You've got all kinds of body types and options for the cornerback position. And then you get 52 on top of it for an extra draft pick for a team that really feels like they're looking to transition their nucleus and and make sure that they are built for the long haul and that they are not just this short-term window exclusive team looking to win some football games. Moving on now to the 26th selection in the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. That is the Dallas Cowboys. And to be honest, guys, I got to commend Jerry Jones and the Jones family. You know, when, when there's when your owner is the GM, you you could do some really weird things when it comes to the NFL draft. And we've seen some weird decisions over the years. But the Dallas Cowboys have been pretty good at drafting really good players high and not overthinking things and just drafting the best guys that are available. Uh, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at the draft board. I'm seeing Darnell Wright as the best player available here. I think you turn in the card and you figure out how your offensive line works together. He's got some versatility. Could play on the left side, could play on the right side. He could even play some guard. I like him best at right tackle. Um, but I think he's just the best player in the Dallas Cowboys have done a really good job going best player available in past drafts. Yeah. Well said they've drafted extremely well. Um, I would lump Darnell Wright on offense and Nolan Smith on defense as the two standout best player available type of deal on the board. So I would have no problem with either. Imagine Nolan Smith and Micah Parsons, their interchangeability would be kind of fun too. I would also consider defensive tackle here. And a name we haven't brought up that I really like is Brian Brzee. Uh, I mean, I think he would be a nice fit here as well. Keith, are there any fits you like here for the Cowboys at 26? 
Yeah, I, I don't mind the Brian Brissett. And we paying attention to the Dallas Cowboys over the past couple of years is weird because they like undersized defensive linemen, and then they get to the playoffs, and then the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> run football on them. So, uh, Brian, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that situation over the past Excuse two it. years. So having a bigger guy like Brian Brissett, who is also – he has enough finesse to his game to where he can offer some pass rush ability because I know that's what the Dallas Cowboys, you know, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn likes. So I like the Brissette situation. I thought they would go corner, but they they traded for Stephon Gilmore, so they don't need to go corner anymore. So uh, maybe an off-ball linebacker, but I don't know if I would take him this high. Would you consider Mazzy Smith? I would think about it because that was another okay. athletic guy that can get yeah. upfield. I, 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 I like yeah. that one too, yeah. Well, we'll see if the Cowboys can uh, draft somebody to help them beat the 49ers in the playoffs. Landon McCool has turned in the card and is ready to select at number 26 for Locked On Cowboys. With the 26th pick in the 2023 Locked On NFL mock draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Zay Flowers, wide receiver from Boston College. If the board had fallen this way in the real draft, I, I would hope that the Cowboys would try to find a way or find a better way than I was able to to trade back because there was still a lot of offensive linemen and still a bunch of wide receivers on the board. But it, the way this fell, and unfortunately, I was not able to get any deals done. The Cowboys are thrilled to get a speedy wide receiver who can come in right away and add another speed element to a team that was very slow last year and has already added Brandon Cooks. Zay Flowers can come in right away and learn under Cooks and and be his own kind of threat while also maybe potentially taking over kick and punt return duties as well. And for the Cowboys, they can still manage to get uh, the offensive line help that they still require in the second round, especially with the way the draft had fallen in this case where Osiris Torrance and Steve Avila were still available and still some tackles. So the Cowboys still have a chance to get back up in the second round and get a starter. Zay Flowers, wide receiver out of Boston College here at 26 to the Dallas Cowboys. Keith, he's got quicks. Is he different enough from from uh, Brandon Cooks and I mean really C.D. Lamb's best work is out of the slot is he different enough to fit in with that offense and that group of wide receivers I don't know if he's different enough but he adds more to what they needed right and it's just simply simply being explosive man I think that Prescott was criticized heavily uh, you know last year as far as with his play but they removed his number one option and that was Amari Cooper I don't think people realize how important Amari Cooper was so instead of them having a number one wide receiver I view CeeDee Lamb as somewhere in between a one and a two right he's kind of like a 1.5 and then a significant drop off after that as far as the receiver course so I like it that they're kind of you know, just adding explosive guys and trying to get back to having a more complete receiver core. Could have seen a tight end there as well. If you're looking for an yeah, extra like pass catcher with Dalton Schultz moving on. Interesting selection there. I'm not sure if I love it, but I do like Zay Flowers as a prospect here. Um, more on the prospect that is Zay Flowers from Locked On ACC host, Kenton Gibbs. Hey there, folks, it's Kenton Gibbs with Locked On ACC here to tell you about Zay Flowers. He is a draft riser and for a reason. Ever since the process has started, his stock has gone up and up and up and up, and I'm here to tell you why. The 5'9 receiver out of Boston College plays bigger than he is, runs a 4'4'2 and plays every bit of that, and on top of that, his ability to high point the ball, his ability to run after catch, his ability to, as Steve Smith put it, make the quarterback right is why he's going to be at worst a back of second round guy when many people had a mid-round grade coming in on him zay flowers is dynamic he is going to be a receiver that is barring health will make plays in the nfl for a very long time back to damian parson of locked on nfl draft did dak get a lot better by the addition of zay flowers the Dallas Cowboys selecting Boston College wide receiver Zay Flowers. I love it. You talk about having C.D. Lamb and, and Tony Pollard. Getting Zay Flowers gives Dak Prescott another run after the catch. Dynamic receiver, man. Zay Flowers can line up everywhere. In the backfield, in the slot, out wide is the Z receiver. Motion, you can give him handoffs. You can use him in a variety of ways. You think about the Percy Harvin usage. You think about, you know, you, you see the Kadarius Tony usage. 
we see all these different guys who aren't just gadget guys. He's a real receiver. He's a three-level receiver as well. Improved the ball skills and the tracking ability. He has good contact balance. He's added weight. I think this is a nice pick and a nice fit. You want to continue to – you paid Dak Prescott, so now use your draft picks to build around him and give him more weapons. All right, guys, Joe Marino, the host of Locked On Bills, is up next in this mock draft. And if we know from past Locked On Network mock draft specials, uh, he's he likes to move around. And I know he's talking to some other hosts about potentially moving around. Will he be the next team to trade out of the first round? Find out next on the Locked On NFL mock draft special. We have a trade, fellas, and the Arizona Cardinals are on the move up. The Buffalo Bills are on the move down here in the Locked On NFL Network mock draft special. Pick number 27 is now owned by the Arizona Cardinals and host Alex Clancy of Locked On Cardinals. Who is he moving up for, and how did he get up this high? Guys, you might be a little bit surprised to learn that there's help now for Josh Allen. And Stephon Diggs mm. in that passing game with the Buffalo Bills. DeAndre Hopkins is now a member wow. of the Buffalo Bills. He, along with pick 34 in the second round, are what the Arizona Cardinals utilized to move up eight spots to get into round one to draft their player here at pick number 27. DeAndre Hopkins, is he worth only eight spots in the NFL draft? Now, I know it, t- it takes a lot to go from round two to round one. So is that second round value? Is that third round value of a trade? What do you guys think about this? Whoa, one? Whoa, whoa. I, mean, I was sitting here thinking Buffalo's not thrilled that Jay Flowers just fell. Or maybe they'll settle for a tight end or some kind of pass catcher or first linebacker off the board. Move down seven spots and pick up the Hall of Fame receiver. I know you got to pay him and he's not young, but think Josh Allen's going to like throwing to him? This is phenomenal for Buffalo. This is this is hitting it out the park. This might be the best move of the entire draft because what you do is you're, you're a team that's ready to make a Super Bowl run. You don't even worry about going and get a rookie wide receiver. You get a, a savvy veteran, right? Like right, right. the same thing with Stephon Diggs. You pair these two guys up. Then guess what? When they're good, <laughs> they're all the way good. So I, I think it's a hell of a pick, and he only moved down seven spots. I have some inside knowledge of some of the trade talks that happened with Alex Clancy, and he's been trying to get a one and talking people into a first round valuation for DeAndre Hopkins. And it must be that he wanted somebody in the first round. So he got into the first round, but he didn't get first round value for DeAndre Hopkins. So let's see what this was all about. Who is Alex Clancy after at pick 27? The card is in. Locked on Cardinals host, Alex Clancy with the pick. After trading up with the Buffalo Bills, the Arizona Cardinals select Keely Ringo, cornerback, Georgia. Now, while this may seem like a reach for the Cardinals at 27, moving up from the 34th overall pick and parting ways with DeAndre Hopkins in an effort to do so, Keely Ringo comes from a big-time program, national championship-winning program, and has all the measurables of being a standout corner in the NFL. 4 3 six, 40, just to name one. And when the Cardinals have as many needs as they do, drafting Will Anderson from Alabama and Keely Ringo from Georgia only proves to bolster this defense that is massively devoid of impact talent. And I think this is a home run for the Cardinals moving up at 27, even if they had to give up a little to do so. All right, guys, I want to get your thoughts on this move, this trade, this pick for the Arizona Cardinals. But first, the reaction from the Locked On War Room as this pick was announced and uh, what a reaction it was. Oh. Alex, hey. what are you doing? What? Yikes. You were complaining. Oh, yeah, he he should've should've you me DMs that I saw him hate and he does that. Okay, can I just say Joe Marino and the, the Buffalo Bills absolutely win this trade? Absolutely win this trade. Oh, I don't. This I don't good. care. I don't care how is, good Keely Ringo is. Clancy okay? As this the is very second or third brand. corner Joe, on wait, his. Wait, no. Joe's his just team. lying. Like he's just. He's just. <laughs> <saying this. laughs> I think Alex is just playing the part of Arizona very well. Just, I have the screenshots. Yeah, yeah true. Let the roasting of me begin. He knows. He, he's. A, he's oh my goodness aware. gracious. Yeah. Alex, I mean, Adam is there a locked on host that fits their team better than Clancy? Fits the Cardinals. I feel. Uh, like I feel like he's doing so this. Perfect. 
Like he he's hates so the Cardinals organization yeah. so much. He's just trying to destroy them. Yeah. Yes. It might be <laughs> Stockholm syndrome though. He's hated them for so long. I mean, trapped for so long that he's becoming them, you know, and he's like naturally just making moves that they would make because he's just been stuck for so long there. I, I think we might have a, a brainwashing Stock situation. Liquid, yeah. Yeah. This is the biggest fleece in the history of draft trades. Is this the biggest fleece in the history of the Locked On NFL Mock Draft specials that we've been doing for years here, Matt? And, and I love having Keith involved here as well. And I am getting word now that, um, that Alex Clancy is going on the injured list for a while. Might be on the pup list from uh, hurting his shoulder with the reach he just made uh, in the first round to make this pick. <laughs> no, I don't want to crush him too bad. What, what are your thoughts? Maybe, Keith, you love this pick. What, what are your thoughts on, on Ringo? Is he worth it at the end of round one? Uh, I, I'm just, I don't think so. Seven spots, man, seven spots and D hop, right? And this is the thing, man. You, you want a long corner, right? That has ball skills. Julius Brents is still on the board. Um, Emmanuel Forbes is still on the board. And I'm more than sure that those guys would have been there at the top of the second round. Now, when you walk away from this draft and you say that, hey, I got Will Anderson and Keely Ringo, sounds pretty good, right? But I think when you just look at in the context and you look in the vacuum of that trade and what you were able to get out of it, that's the part where you see the Bills definitely won this trade. Yeah, I'm not sure Hopkins is worth as much as some of our listeners might imagine. But when this trade was announced, I thought it was going to be and the Bills second round pick next year. You know, something like that. No. Very interesting. Uh, well, more on Ringo, though. Let, let, let's not gloss over the prospect that the Arizona Gar- Cardinals got here at pick 27 in the mock draft special. Daniel Monroe, the host of Locked on Bulldogs. What is up, everybody? Daniel Monroe from the Locked On Bulldogs podcast talking about Keely Ringo, cornerback, uh, projected maybe first round, maybe maybe falling into the second round pick in this year's NFL draft. Keely has got elite size and speed for the position. He's always had the physical tools. <clears throat> um, uh, and it really, if you look at the, at the numbers, he doesn't get he doesn't give up big plays he doesn't get thrown against and then in the biggest games of his career you look at the national championship game two years ago you look at the tennessee game in athens this last year when tennessee was ranked number one in the country Keeley comes up with big interceptions in those big moments. Seems to seems to be a guy that rises to the occasion when he plays against the elite wideouts, which he obviously will be doing each week in the NFL. I think Keeley Ringo is going to be a fantastic cornerback prospect at the next level. Even the Locked On Bulldogs host thought he was more of a second-round pick than a first-round pick. But let's go to Damian Parson. And maybe someone really loves this selection for the Cardinals, host of Locked On NFL Draft. The Arizona Cardinals have ignored the cornerback position for too many years to this point. Now it stops. They moved up in the draft, trading with the Buffalo Bills and trading away De, uh, De, DeAndre Hopkins to get Akili Ringo, a hometown kid, legitimately explosive in the straight line, big, physical, athletic young man that can play press man and beat you up at the line of scrimmage, but also showed flashes of brilliance in zone coverage as well. So I think he has the potential to be, you look at the Tariq Woolen, you look at Sauce Gardner and how they were used last year. They were used in man in spurts, but they were playing predominantly zone. I think you can get that type of play from Keely Ringo. He has championship pedigree. He's been coached by some of the best coaches in college football. Football, I'm trusting him and his development. Pick 28 now on the clock. That means it's the Cincinnati Bengals' turn to select in the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, the penultimate episode. We're going to end it with pick 28 and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, I'm still looking at Darnell Wright, best player available to me. There's a there's a few directions they could go, but um, th- this is just a slam dunk pick to me. You guys see anything else that you like on the board for the Bengals? Maybe tight end, but I'm with you. I think this is like the easiest pick in the draft, and the Bengals are doing the jig right now. You know, just run up the card for Darnell Wright. Darnell yeah, Wright. I, I, I think that's the pick, too, and then I'm looking at the Bengals. I'm like, man, how much capital, whether that's money via free agency or draft capital, are y'all going to spend on this offensive line before y'all right. get it right? <laughs> like, yeah. We thought last year y'all did the overhaul and got it correct. So, But, but I think it, it should be done out right. 
Well, we've seen some player trades, and, and maybe this is where Jonah Williams gets traded as well after they make a pick like that. Or, I mean, I do like tight end, and there's some really good tight ends in this class. So uh, we shouldn't be completely shocked by a tight end here, but I feel like offense is the way to go for the Bengals with pick 28. Uh, and let's find out because and the PP, has- Real quick, if, if yeah. you could turn like – if you make the pick of Darnell right here, you turn Jonah Williams into a second round pick that ends up being Washington or Musgrave. Like now you're talking. That's yeah. why you tune into Peacock and Williamson every day <laughs> and Friday here on the Locked On Podcast Network because you got great thinkers like Matt Williamson right there. I love it. Let's see what James Rapine is doing, the host of Locked On Bengals at pick 28. And with the 28th pick in the 2023 Locked On NFL mock draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Tennessee. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine from the Locked On Bengals podcast. And this was a no brainer pick. The fact that the Bengals are able to address their biggest need right tackle, and maybe it's not their biggest need in 2023, but it's their biggest need past this season. Darnell Wright is a plug and play right tackle. It would allow them to move on from Jonah Williams, who has requested a trade and it would give them really a physical freak at both tackle spots. You have a six, eight left tackle in Orlando Brown jr. And now a six, five, three and, 333 pounder in Darnell Wright ran a 501 40 yard dash. He's a high end athlete. He tested great in the 96th percentile among tackle prospects. And it's not just that his tape looked great. And so he's one of the more flawless prospects in this draft. And so with guys like Michael Mayer and Dalton Kincaid and Deontay Banks going over the past couple of picks, This was a no-brainer to fortify the trenches, protect Joe Burrow in the Bengals' quest for a Super Bowl. Great pick by the Bengals here. I don't think uh, that Matt or Keith would disagree there. The last pick, the Cardinals pick, was universally panned in the locked-on war room. Uh, Let's go find out about the selection for the Bengals and see the reaction to this selection. Yeah. Yeah. Slam dunk pick for the Bengals. I I mean, they just – whatever they're on right now – I, we need to bottle it and sell it to the Titans GM because the Bengals are crushing everything right now. And this is just for him to fall in their laps. I mean, it's just Joe Burrow changed that franchise in a way. I don't know if any player has ever changed a single franchise. I mean, to go from what they were to what they are now after Burrow. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The rich getting richer here, guys, and uh, I I don't think I disagree with most of that. And sometimes the best moves are are the ones where you just sit back and you let the draft come to you. I I would say it seems like Tyler liked the the Bengals pick so much, man. He should have went with Darnell Wright, right? (laughs) I know. We got him 17 picks later. (laughs) All right. More on Darnell Wright, the offensive tackle from Tennessee with Locked On Vols host Eric Kane. Hey, what's up, everybody? Eric Kane, host of Locked On Vols. Offensive tackle Darnell Wright is going to be a star in this NFL draft class. He is a 40-plus game starter in Southeastern Conference play, and he's only going to be 22 years old when training camp begins later on this summer. Darnell Wright is a freak of an athlete. Six foot five, 333 pounds. He can fly. He dominated in position drills at Pro Day and at the NFL Combine, ran well, and was one of the highlights of the Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama. Darnell Wright is going to be a star in the National Football League, and he really blossomed under Glenn Ellerby's leadership at the University of Tennessee. Tennessee off to tackle Darnell Wright. He's going to be a stud. Let's hear more about the prospect that is Darnell Wright, offensive tackle from Tennessee, from our Locked On NFL Draft co-host, Damian Parson. The Cincinnati Bengals go back to the trenches to protect Joe Burrow with Tennessee's Darnell Wright. Darnell Wright, this is a solid, this is a solid and interesting situation because Darnell Wright played better at right tackle, in my opinion, than he did at left. He was admirable at left at Tennessee, but he got he has the length, the power uh, for a guy. He's not the best athlete in terms of being explosive and dynamic out of out of his out of his uh sets, uh, you know, out of the blocks and his jump sets and quick sets. 
but the guy that really knows how to meet meet pass rushes at the apex, and when he gets his hands on guys, he can really drive them into the dirt and just move them off the ball. So he's going to improve the run game. But again, I'm just more so concerned of where you're going to play him. Do you truly feel comfortable with him playing left tackle in the NFL where his best reps were at the right tackle position, especially because you have Leo Collins at left, I mean, at the right tackle position, I'm a little con- I'm a little confused here. I think it's a good it-, it could be a good fit if he's right tackle. I don't know how I feel about it at the left. Some reaches, some trades, some steals at the end of the first round here. We've only got one more episode to go of the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft special. Before we go, I want to get some more analysis and some overall thoughts from episode five of the series from the draft dudes locked on NFL scouting hosts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino Kyle another fun slate of picks here we had a trade as well to reflect on and I'd like to start this conversation with the Dallas Cowboys going out and getting Zay Flowers this is a lot that they've done now this offseason to bolster their wide receiver core with trading for Brandon Cooks and now adding Zay Flowers to the mix I mean you look at this with those two players, in addition to CeeDee Lamb, in addition to Michael Gallup, you really feel like Dak has the wide receiver talent that he really needs. And I'm a big Zay Flowers fan. I, I think the way that he runs routes, there is a, a really sudden train, change of direction ability there. A lot of twitch, that ability to run away and get in and out of breaks is really dynamic. He's amazing with the ball in his hands. He can get vertical. And I think his ability to win at all three levels of the field is just a huge asset to this offense where they have a lot of complete skill sets at at wide receiver. And so uh, as Dak Prescott is the guy, right? Zeke's no longer there. This is his offense. There's no questions about it. I love the receivers that Dallas has now in place for him to move forward with. Yeah, it's, it's, it certainly feels like in the same sense that we discussed earlier throughout the mock about the situation around Lamar Jackson and the wide receivers, Dallas has been trying to fully transition this offense into being Dak Prescott's offense and for him to be the kind of player that you want when you're paying 40 plus million dollars for the quarterback position. And if it ain't going to happen this year, yeah, it makes you ask the question right now. One thing that, that we saw finally started to see last year as another, if it's not going to happen now, then when was the Bengals offensive line really started to take shape last year. And that was uh, some free agency It was the draft with Cordell Volson stepping in at left guard. Uh, But Lyle Collins suffered an injury towards the end of the season. And now they're they're injecting Darnell Wright at that right tackle spot. They still have to resolve the Jonah Williams outstanding issue as far as playing at guard, doesn't want to play right tackle reportedly. So there's, there's a definitive opportunity here now to move on from Jonah Williams and you'll have Orlando Brown Jr. at left tackle and you'll have Darnell Wright at right tackle. And you really feel good about the size and length of those two players and protection for Joe Burrow and that Bengals offense. So I really like that addition uh, to transition away from Lyle Collins. You'll save some money on that deal by, by parting ways with him as well. So like that move for, for the Bengals to sustain the momentum that they managed to piece together next year for the first time in what felt like forever and trying to resolve their own issues uh, on a certain spot, spot on the roster. Next on the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, we will finish it up in episode six. We've got Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs to make a selection at number 31. Phones still ringing for the last few picks of the first round, and we've got half a dozen teams that still haven't made a selection yet in round one that we will hear from. The first picks from now the Buffalo Bills, who are no longer in round one. Los Angeles Rams, Minnesota Vikings that traded out of round one. The Dolphins, who had their first round pick taken away. The Denver Broncos, who traded away their first round pick for a quarterback that might not even be the quarterback of the future, and uh, the Cleveland Browns and San Francisco 49ers as well to make selections in round of the 2023 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. And don't forget, you can find the entire special on both audio and video at the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show, Locked On NFL Draft, and Locked On NFL Podcast Feeds. For Matt Williamson and Pete Sanchez, I'm Brian Peacock. We'll see you for the end of the first round and into round three for every team's first pick in this Mock Draft Special, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.